Let's get the people what they want. The Wado Radio Show. I wanted to ask you about this. I actually didn't get a chance to ask show about this. I remember Cam used to be a part of so many early yeah, bro. records, man. Just, 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 just talk about talk about him. I mean, I know y'all got a few. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I met him that day. That was the first time I met him too. Oh, yeah. he was there. He was there, bro. Yeah, he was there. He came down. He came down because yeah. I, I I remember I didn't even know what he looked like. Yeah, and then I heard him talk. And I was like, man, you sound like Cam. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, said, because yeah. I am. Because I am him. <laughs> Yo, that's so funny, bro. No, so Texas, North Texas, Dallas area, yep. where we were living, going to school in Denton, uh, it was so close to the Oklahoma border. And honestly, I don't know if it was Cray or Sho who first got us introduced to them. But at some point, I just remember hearing Cam's voice yeah. and thinking, this is phenomenal. Yeah, This dude is, is amazing. Yeah. He could sing, bro. And so when I met him, I was like, it, it was like God was help. God helped us to meet people from different places who, like little pockets of of places where everybody was a part of, like they had their own community. Yeah. And we were just connecting with other communities like ours. Yeah. Uh, the same thing happened in St. Louis. The same thing happened yep. in Florida. The same thing happened. Like it was like this is what it is. So Cam and then Cam's cousin. This is who show really need to thank. Like Cam can sing, he's on stage, but choir boy, we called him, his nickname was choir boy, but Reggie, his cousin Reginald, like that dude was the producer. He was he was writing, he was doing everything. I didn't know that was Cam's cousin though. Yes, that's his cousin. Wow. Bro. So when me, show had a record that we did together called Maranatha. Yeah. Yeah. We went to Oklahoma. That record was tough. Appreciate it, bro. That beat. Yeah, bro. Yeah. He, he produced it. Wow. We went to Oklahoma, and Reggie made that beat, and we sat there working and working and working. And it was probably like a good eight hours, bro. But this was back when cats didn't have kids. Yeah. You didn't have job yeah. obligations because yeah. yeah. you're full-time music. Yeah. You could, so just, you, just, you could just go. You could just go. We was up all night. I remember working on that song at four in the morning, and it was just like, I think we got some show, and then we kept going with it. Yeah. But yeah, and then he called Jason. He jumped on it. Like it was, it was a, it was a moment, bro. And I just remember being in Oklahoma. Like most of my musical stuff for um, identity crisis was because of Reggie. Mm. Like just could play drums. Yeah, had had band members. Like they was phenomenal. Yeah, and at one point. That was show's band. Yeah. Like, they would travel with him. Yeah. So, yeah. I think I did some shows with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did some shows with yeah, them. Yeah, he like, was always the drummer. Super yeah. dope dude, man. You um, you you mentioned uh, St. Louis, Florida. Mm-hmm. How did the Thizzle Jason connections yeah. happen? Yeah. Cray went up to St. Louis for a show. Yeah. And I think some of the cats up there heard about it. Yeah. And they wanted to go check it out. And they went. And I want to say... If I remember correctly, um, Thiz or Flame, one of them knew who Cray was. Yeah. The rest of them didn't. Okay. So they were kind of like, I guess we'll go listen to this dude from Texas rap. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of, I think that's how it was. I love it. And not, they weren't throwing shade. I love it. They just was like, we sure, whatever. Yeah. And so they went and they all just hit it off. So when I just remember when Cray came back, he was telling all of us, like, yo, I met these people in St. Louis. They just like us. Like, mm. bro, they got their little own community. They out there trying to serve the Lord. Yeah. They're doing ministry. They this, this, and this. So when I went, when the next time he went, I went with him. And when I got there, I was just like, yo, this is amazing. Yeah. Like, it was so dope to meet people who were our age, our demographic, similar backgrounds, and and we all was rapping for God. Like it was such a dope moment, bro. Um, we went to <laughs> we went to say Thiz gonna laugh. We went to St. Louis. I went to, I went to St. Louis with him. We did the show. Show's done. We go back to Jason. We go back to um, um, we go back to um, did we go to Jason's house? No. Who else did we go to? Anyway, we in somebody's basement. And we start freestyling on the mic. Yeah. Flame freestyle, then uh, Cray freestyle, then Thiz freestyle. And Th Thiz is on the mic, and he was like, we out here in St. Louis. I got my homeboy, Lecrae. <laughs> we got his homeboy, Thaddeus. Thaddeus. <laughs> Dog, it shut everything down. Nobody I'm rapped. I'm glad you sound like him, though. <laughs> I got my dude, Thaddeus. I said, yo. Lecrae said, who is Thaddeus? <laughs> 
and look, and he thought that was uh, my name because uh, we had just met. Yeah, yeah. Like we had met like <laughs> eight hours before that. Yeah. So he was like, "I got my dude Thaddeus." So every time I see him, I just be like, "What's up, man?" He'd be like, "What's up, Thaddeus?" I'm like, "Oh my goodness, bro." <laughs> Jr. We was in Jr. Base. Jr. Okay. Because okay. Jr. was make, mess, making the beat. Yeah. But anyway, man. Yeah. You had Jr. You had you had Nab. So hot productions. Bruh, so hot productions, and then you had Flame and Thizzle and Jason, Trub, that whole that rap yeah. duo. Her. Yep. I mean, they was yep. they was killing it, man. You had tons of people out there, man. Fox. Like it was it was a dope time, bro. Yeah. And those people became family. Like anytime I would take the during the college ministry years, I would take a group to to Chicago. To do some, uh, spring break missions trips, yep. um, we would drive through St. Louis and spend the night, and they would all host us. Like it became family beyond the music. Like we would all just go kick it. So, how long did you do the college ministry? How long did you um, actually do that? Seven years, maybe. Really? Yeah, yeah. In addition to, so this is like you do an identity crisis album, mm -hmm. and you still doing the and college? I'm still doing college ministry. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I. Man, I'm telling you, I was born to be a communicator. Wow. So any mo and I didn't notice at the time, but any opportunity to communicate something, yeah. like I was about it. Yeah. So I was able to go, I was leading a small group, I was working on music, I was traveling, doing shows, I was also um, speaking on Thursday nights sometimes when we did our Bible studies, um, and then I was serving at the church too. Beautiful, bro. Yeah, bro. I had no idea you was doing all that. Yeah, bro. Honestly. Yeah, it was it was a crazy. That's time. why you stayed in Dallas so long. Yeah. Well, so when everybody left, so Cray and the label went to Memphis. They went to Memphis first for a year. It was like a year. It was like it was like two yeah. years. They went yeah. to Memphis. I was that was right before the first Unashamed tour. Right. Yeah. I was a newlywed. Yeah. And was and my wife had a full time gig and she was working in corporate America. And it was like, that don't make sense to go there because right. Memphis Airport don't go everywhere direct. So right. it didn't make sense to leave. But also, I was always the person like, all right, Lecrae get excited about stuff and then mm. change his mind. Yep. I'm going to wait. How long, <laughs> how long this going to last? How long this going to really happen? Yeah, 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 you yeah, know, yeah. Lecrae is yeah. a dude that's like, they on the hill. Let's go get them. Right. And then when he gets to the hill, it's like, they over there. Y'all go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, he for you, but it's like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. he don't want to do that no more. Yeah. So we just knew off top, like, yeah, this I'm going to wait and see what y'all do. Yep. And they ended up staying. But yep. I never moved to Memphis. I would stay in Memphis for weeks. Yeah. But I would never. I never moved there because my wife had her job. So. Yeah. But I also stayed in Dallas because my wife is from Dallas and she, all her family was there. It just made sense. Yeah. Um, but also while we were there, I was working on part time at the church. Yeah. Still, um, doing music and eventually the elders were like, "Bro, just go do it. And if if you need to come back, we here. Like yeah. just go do it." And so they kind of gave me that blessing. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's yeah, beautiful. Man. Um. All right, man. So, Kingdom People, a little reluctant. A little but, reluctant. But what happens when that comes out? What 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 turned the corner where you was just like, I got to do this? Because it was like once you got rolling, you started rolling. Yeah, bro. yeah. So King, I tell everybody, Kingdom People was my test run. Yep. It was like, do I really want to do this? Let's see. When I did it, I waited to see what everybody said. Like, not even just the public, just my friends around me. I'm like, what are they going to say? Does this suck? Is it good? But when I saw... When they heard Houston, we got a problem. Bro, I'm telling you. That was the one. Bro, I went, we recorded at a studio in Irving. I remember I was in the studio. I forget dude's name. It was a Mexican dude who was engineering me. And he said, hey, man, this song would be dope. It would be doper if you could chop and screw the, the hook. Mm. And I was like, that's what I want to do, but I don't, all my people in Houston. Yeah. He was like, I'll do it. I said, oh, do it. So he did it. Oh, man, I almost called his name, too. Anyway, he did it, and when he did it, it was like, yo, what? Hold on, was it Primo? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, way before, okay. way before okay. that. And okay. he wasn't in the Christian space. Okay. Um, I almost called his name. But anyway, uh, they, was good. They, was just, they was just dude, hood dudes who had a, yeah. had a record store, and in the back they had a studio. Yep. And so we would record there. And he chopped and screwed that hook, and when everybody heard it, they was like, bro, you got one. This yeah. is crazy. Yeah. So that was the record. And then um, uh, we were doing stuff at Kids Across America. I remember that record. And I had Off the Hook on there, yep. too. That and off the, the camp hook went was, crazy. Yeah. So those two records were like, okay. Yeah. And then on that, and then for off the, hook, off for the, the hook, old off heads. The hook, off the hook. Right, right, right. Yeah. It wasn't intentional, but for the old heads, it clicked for them when I did a song called uh, – um, uh, I want I forget it's called one time or something like that but it was uh it was like a ode to 
all the older people in my life. Yep. And it was like, yo, this this dude is saying some stuff to honor us. Mm. Okay. Mm. So whenever like we was we started rapping at the time where rap was not allowed in the church. Like yep. they weren't gonna let you in. Yep. Like I done been kicked out of so many churches rapping or yep. having jeans on or having a hat on. Like they kicked me out. So when I went into some churches, I would start with that song and they would hear it and I, I was I would rap that song, then I would do it a cappella so they could hear the lyrics and know, like, oh, he respects. Strategy. Yeah. Because if, if I can give them theirs, then I can yeah, get the yeah. kids what they want. Yeah, like, yeah. So it was back and forth. But you had to play them games because they was like, you ain't coming here with that hip-hop stuff, boy. Yep. So yep. anyway, I started doing Kingdom People, and it, it really did just go, this is a test run, and it worked. I tell everybody, Identity, Identity Crisis gave me a career. Mm. Identity Crisis happened. And I'm people, a believer. Come on. People heard I'm a believer. People heard uh, I'm fresh. They yep. heard I'm fresh. Inches. Oh, that was so tough. That beat, Thank bro. You, bro. That hey, beat. Hey, Gavi, bro. He yeah. killed it. So that you had all these, you had all these records that people were identifying with, but at the same time, it was a cohesive project. Like some people, for me, they'll go, man, that's your classic album. Like it was a yeah. legitimate classic project. That's one life. of your classics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of your it. classics. I appreciate one it. of your classics. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, yeah, but I, I feel like Identity Crisis gave me a career. Yeah. And then after that, it was just off to the races, bro. One of the, one of the things that, and, and I, I would, I mean, you still have this. You have the ability, every single one of your projects, you got a single that smashed. <laughs> Like every single one, all the way, even even with these new EPs, yeah. Like you always have, like, like, how is that? Because I mean, now we're in an era where so many people put out singles, right? right like it's kind right, of the thing, right, bro? We we talking two thousand six, two thousand eight, two thousand ten, yeah. like, yeah. and it's just like you always had, yeah. Like you naming these albums, I'm the singles is you know what I mean, yeah, like, bro. yeah. As a DJ, it stick out for you. Oh, yeah. come on, bro. You already yeah. know. Yeah. Man. I had routines that I'm a believer. Come like, on, yeah, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, listen, yeah, yeah. There, there, was such a, there was such a pull for me. Again, I'm a communicator. I want to say something that matters to people. But it, it had to first hit well. So I, my first three albums... I wrote every one of them albums for my cousins on the block. Mm. All of them. I, if mm. it didn't, if they if they left it on, I knew it was good. Yeah. Like if they yeah. shut it off, I'm like, oh, I ain't, I ain't do good enough. Yeah. And even though it was unto the Lord, I knew who my audience was. Yeah. And then eventually, the 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 skill to be able to do it grew. Yep. To where I was like, yep. we need this kind of song. I'm gonna do this. We need yep. this kind of song. I'm gonna do this. But that just goes to, I've had several people at the label come to me and say that you know you're the most versatile artist on the label. Like you, um, Andy's DJ uh, said it too. He was like, man, you you are one of the most versatile people I know. Yeah. And so I just leaned into that. I actually feel like, bro. You could pull off a worship album and it sound like it not sound like oh my god he's trying to do a worship album. <laughs> Yo, uh, bro, I when I say this, I was a I'm an artist for real. Yeah, like uh, I didn't come in. The other reason I didn't want to rap when starting out is because I knew I just didn't rap. Mm -hmm. Like show it. Like I didn't go around singing everywhere, but I grew up singing in church. Yeah, so I would sing at certain places. Yeah. but I always felt the artist level of insecurity. Yeah, so I wouldn't do it in, in front of certain people. Yeah, but like one of my most public moments around the people who like growing up all the time, my mama had me everywhere. But around the people who know me now from the music. I sang at Show's wedding, and that was like the moment where it was like, it's a wedding. You better do something. You better kill it. And I came in, and I started. I was like, oh, yeah. Lord, yeah. what did I do to deserve this? Uh, and the whole group was like, uh, shut up. Like, uh, all the noise. Uh, and and uh, Sh Show said, <laughs> Show had me dying. Show Baraka was like, it was my wedding. But you're going to try to take the thought. It's our <laughs> wedding, bro. You should have had to focus on us. You up here singing to this girl. I was like, hey, man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So it was just this moment where I knew, like, yeah. I'm, 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 I do more than rap, but I don't know if I want to be an artist. Yeah. So when rap happened, I was like, man, if this is what I'm on, if this is what I'm doing, I'm going to rap. So let's rap. 
And I've always been competitive and I've always been around people who wanted the best. So it was just like, well, this has got to be great. And me and Craig started, when we first started doing music, <clears throat> we was like, if this don't rival what they hear on the radio, they're not going to play it. Facts. 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 It's, it's cool that you're Facts. saying something good, but if it don't sound good, like if it don't sound, like my latest run of EPs with Dead or Alive, like when I when we did Victory Lap, I was like, I got one. Yep. Because it's got to sound just as good. Yep. I went to a school here, Tucker High School here in Georgia, and I went in, my home, my drummer is the band director there. And I played, I played the, the music for them, and they heard Victory Lap. These kids started playing it. Mm, they just started playing it on their own. Know. That's I was when like, you know. me, yeah. uh, Jay Paul, my homeboy, we started looking around. We were like, yeah. yo, this is it, bro. Yeah. Hey, we got one, bro. So it's always had to be that feel for people on the street to be like, okay, this is good. I like yeah. this. Yeah. Nah. Do you, when you record one, do you know most of the time, oh, this is, this is, this is a this is a this is one here or does it sometimes take the feedback? No, it take the feedback sometimes. Yeah. Um so one one joint, uh Dum Dum. You knew that one? No. I didn't. You didn't know. No, okay. not at all. Wow. Not at all. Jita Beats made the yeah, beat. Yeah, yeah. Jita sent Jita! the Remember Jita? Jita! Shout out that boy Jita. Jita sent the record to me, the, the track to me, and I was like, this is amazing. I played the track for three people, and they said, don't do it. Mm. And I go, why? They yeah, go, that's they not your sound. Wow. That's not your sound, man. You from the South. That's not your yeah. sound. And I was like, but I'm an artist. I remember yeah. saying that, but I'm an artist. They was like, nah, that's not your sound. That's not your sound. Okay, whatever. So I go. Who were the three people? Can I ask who the three people uh, were? Two, two, of them, two of them I don't remember, honestly, because okay. we were living in Texas. Yeah, yeah. But one of them was... Uh, um, one of them worked at the label at the time. Okay, okay. And so okay. they were just like, yeah, that's not your sound, bro. And I get why they say that, yeah, yeah, because yeah. they wanted to be a cohesive sure. presentation. But I was like, this is too good, and I, I love it. I got to do it. So I leaned into it and did it. And then when I played it, they were like, mm, I don't know. We'll see. So what I said was, I'm going to recut my, my – I knew this much. If I go to – if I go to your if I go to your church yeah. and I stand up and speak, they may listen because I'm speaking, but if I go to your church and you introduce me, they're gonna listen. Yeah, facts. I knew, all right, everybody know Lecrae got some West Coast in him. Yep. I'm gonna put him on the song with yep. me. So yep. I did. And when I played the song, both Ben and Lecrae were like, nah, that ain't it. Mm. Don't do it. And Cray was like, well, let me do it with you. I'll do it with you. You want me to do it with you? I was like, yeah. So I do it, and then the label's like, not bad. All right, look, hey, we'll back off. If you believe in it that much, yeah. we'll put it out. Yeah. Became the biggest record. Yeah, that mug is, that's a monster, bro. And it was just, yeah. it, it, I didn't know what it was going to be. Yeah. I just knew that I loved it. Yeah. I knew that I had vision for it. And that's probably something, like, if I would tell any artist, man, one, I'm like, if you believe in yourself, don't quit. But two, if, if you got a vision for a record, then, then do it. Like, don't just go, oh, it ain't going to work. If you got a vision for real, just do it, because you never know. And that's what that record was for me. I was wow. like, I got a vision. So one of my other biggest records is um, Gotta Live. Yeah. Completely yeah. different sound. Yeah. Completely whatever. I went to the yeah. A&R and I was like, we not done yet. We need another one for the album. We need one. We need that one. He was like, okay, all right, let's work. And when we started messing with it, I was like, we need something like this. They was like, okay, let's get to work. So my dude, Zach Paradise, out of, he, live, he yep. was here, he living in L.A. now. Yep. Uh, Zach produced it along with Ace at the label. And when I heard it, I was like, this is dope. Let me yeah. get busy. So I, I got to work. Um, but it was just like, this is going to work because I have a vision for it. Yeah. That's all it was. Um, jumped, out, jumped out the whip. That was my record, bro. Gavi made that That's joint. That's a DJ record. It is, bro. Yeah. Gavi made that joint, and I was like, hmm, uh, I got an idea. I got a vision for it. If I ain't got no vision for it, it's not going to work. Mm. If I got a vision for it, it's going to work. Yeah. So I had a vision for it, and I went. And he was like, I did not know you was going to come that way on them verses. <laughs> he was like, the way you leaned on them verses made yeah. it work. And I was yeah. like, bro, I just had a vision for it. Yeah. So I'm like, man, if you got a vision for a record, do it, man. Don't don't let nobody stop you. You never know. That's good, man. I, I think a lot of times, particularly in this era, we get so caught up in what people think. Yeah. And I think as a creative person, period, mm -hmm. 
right? Like, you know, you DJ, you music, you preach, you podcast, you do artwork, whatever it is, that vision is key, man. It's key. You got to yeah. have it. So when I said, when I sat down with you and said, I'm building, yeah. it's because I have vision for it. Yeah. But those moments gave me the confidence to follow through on the vision. Like if I had no vision for what I'm building, I wouldn't build it. Yeah. But I, I do. So I'm like, all right, let's get busy. So I'm still doing music. Um, I'm, I'm starting my podcast back up. Um, I'm, I started acting. So I'm doing voice acting um, and I'm doing on camera acting now. Um, I started writing some movie scripts. I started working on pro producing them. I'm doing public speaking because that's my first love. I was speaking and preaching before I was rapping. Um, I, Bro, got you, I got ordained to, to preach when I was 23. Wow. Wow. So, yeah, wow. Bro, I've been doing it. Tremendous, man. Thanks for tapping in, family. Please consider joining our Patreon community. One, you'll get the rest of this interview, but two, you'll be the first to know when we drop new content. Your support on Patreon really helps us continue to make this content and not have to rely on things like the YouTube algorithm, which can be extremely fickle. So we really appreciate you tapping in and joining us over on Patreon. The link is below. You can click it. We have a bunch of different tiers. A lot of really cool bonus features that you get depending on what tier you join. And you can basically uh, decide to join at whatever level is comfortable for you. As always, thank you so much for your support. And I'll check you guys next video.